Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. It gives you everything you need in one place for free, which you can use right from your phone or computer. Creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great. They'll even distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can easily make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Awesome. Welcome to another episode of It Is What It Is podcast. I'm your host, Cody Kelly. Look, I appreciate my guests. I appreciate you for tuning in. And if you want to keep seeing amazing content, you got to do two things. You got to follow me on my two favorite platforms. The first one, Instagram at CVMK33, and the second one, YouTube at CV Space K. Also, I'm where all podcasts are heard. If your preference is Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, however, wherever we are there. I have an amazing episode with some amazing guests that have their own show, own podcast. I mean, they're doing their thing, Dining with Nadiva. It would be inappropriate for me to introduce them. I'm allowing them to introduce themselves, starting with Nadiva. Hello, I'm your hostess with the most. Nadiva. <laughs> and awesome. I'm Tracy. Hi, guys. Oh. Awesome. And we Ooh. are... TNT. This is TNT Productions. Look, I appreciate them so much. Thank you guys again. When I reached out, look, I I, uh, saw uh, the show. Uh, We're all kind of part of the same networking group. And I reached out and I reached out, you know, to the diva. And I was like, you know, I'd really be interested in, you know, featuring you all. And uh, she acquiesced. And I really appreciate it, you know, because sometimes you come into some interesting personalities that are a little grand and think they're bigger than what they are. And it's like, I'm like, Oh, it's just a show. I do what you do. You know? So I appreciate you guys. You guys are amazing, but let's get into it. So this topic is really exploring the appropriateness of relationships. I think a lot has happened, right? Anybody that knows me knows that I'm a stickler for equality. They know that I push feminism hard um, and it saddens me when I keep hearing about these allegations and these scandals and misconduct from these men of power. And I, and I wondered, you know, either you have to come to the reality that most men are all men are dogs or the boundaries between the genders really have never been appropriately flushed out. A lot of norms that were accepted and acceptable in years past are no longer acceptable. So we want to get into it. We want to uncover this. So I'm going to start with Nadiva. Nadiva. Yeah. Can a man and a woman be friends? And then what does that friendship look like? Well, I mean, I, I always, I talk about a lot of dynamics of friendships on my show. You know, it, it's very, it depends on the dynamic. Um, I feel like, Boundaries are extremely important if you are in a relationship and you have friends of the opposite sex. Um, I think having a discussion with your partner or me um, about that relationship outside of your relationship with them and really get balance is also key so that one person is not feeling like, oh, my God, well, what is this? Or feeling threatened. Um, same thing with, um, you know, that friend, that friend who you of the opposite sex that you may have been friends with before you even got into that relationship um having that explanation and that understanding with them as well um but i do think balance and boundaries are very very important and especially the dynamics i mean if you have um, i think we talked about um in one of our episodes that's airing shortly we talked about how um uh you know when you have let's say a friendship that started off as a relationship 
right? It soured. And now you've become really great friends, right? But now you've moved on and are in a relationship, but you still have that friendship relationship. You still have that friend that you had a relationship with before. So it's like, how do you now explain it to your partner? We're just friends. You know, although we may have dibbled and dabbled in the past, we now know that that's not working. It's right. over, and we're just friends. So, I like it. Dibbling and dabbling. Dibbling and dabbling. <laughs> you know, the brought a dibbling and dabbling. Talk to me about those boundaries. Like, if you <laughs> dibbled and dabbled, right? right? However, whatever that, you know, uh, and now you're in this new space right. with this new partner, but that person might, you know, still be semi-important. You know, like, they might Go to your church. I don't know. I mean, like, there's some type of connection that is like is irrevocable, right? You just right. can't change it. Like, how do you how do you navigate through that kind of awkward space? I think communication is key. I think being honest is key um, about where you are in your friendship with that person and in your relationship. And me personally, having that. It, that that type of situation presently. Um, I'm very good friends with my ex-husband and I'm in a relationship. And just talking to the person that I'm with saying, are you comfortable um, with, with this friendship? Are you comfortable with the phone calls? Are you comfortable? Like just really be and that's just who I am. I'm always willing to talk about stuff to just have the difficult conversations and see where it's at. And I think that's important. But also to establishing boundaries for the person that you're still friends with. Um and saying, hey, I'm in a relationship and we got I got a new boundary. Like maybe you can't call me every day. You know what I mean? That's it's just it's inappropriate. It doesn't look well. It doesn't feel good to my partner, um, and I want to respect him and his feelings and not do that. So I think communication is what it's all about. And I'm a big thing. I'm a big um, promoter of communicating. And what does that look like for people? What you know, communication is talking about how you feel, how they feel, and 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 setting the boundary. Like you can't. You can't call me every day. Maybe you could call me once a week or once a month and check in and say hi and catch up. Um, maybe we can't do dinner anymore, right? Like maybe it's just a, a check in. I think that's it, it all depends on like what Nadia was saying. I'm going to refer back to that. What's the situation? What's the scenario? What's the dynamic of the relationship? I like that, Tracy. Dynamic of the relationship. I think you and Nadia hit on the head. So, Tosh, I'm throwing this to you because. Tasha, you're married, correct? I've done I've, uh, less, right? So dynamic, your dynamic uh, in the relationship is a little different, right? So let's say uh, your partner, you know, comes to you and is like, "Hey, you know, we went to college together. You know, um, you know, when I played, she was there when I crossed over. You know, and I've known her for fifteen plus years, and you know, I get it. We've been together, but." You know, she's coming to town. Can I see her? Talk talk to us about, because when you're married, it adds another layer of complexity, right? It um, does. It does. So, so talk to us about that complexity. <laughs> it all goes back to everything the lady said previously. It's about the dynamics of the relationship. It's about communication. It's about being honest with your partner, but being honest with yourself, too. And it's about transparency. Um, you know, my husband uh, served in the military. Uh, he retired about five, six years ago, but he served in military with everyone. So he had made friends with men, with women over the years. He's done several deployments. So people have come and gone. And uh, it's it's not out of the ordinary for him to say, hey, uh, do you remember so-and-so? She and I served together in Kuwait. Well, she's going to be in town. Uh, we want to get up for dinner. The first thing he does, he's like, do you want to come? I would love for us all to go. He always includes me. You know, I, I want I want us to all sit down. I want you to get to know her. And if I'm available, I go. If I'm not available, then he'll go. But it's really just a matter of him being transparent. He tells me uh, or your partner should inform you of how often they're talking to that person. What are they talking about? 
are there some subjects that are off limits? Yeah. You know, that it's all about setting those boundaries. Yes, she's my friend or yes, he's my friend, but I don't talk about you and me to him or not that I don't talk about you and me to him, but like, I don't talk about the intimacies of our relationship with him. I, I, I want them to, to know each other. I want them and he wants me to know his friends. So it's really just a matter of keeping us included. And mm-hmm. when a problem arises, you see something that you don't like, you speak on it. You're honest about it. Don't try to be that person that's like, no, nah, I'm cool with it. I'm cool. I'm secure. <laughs> right. I'm cool. And then you see the dynamics between the two of them. You're like, but wait, hold up. Oh, no, no, no. I'm still cool. But wait. <laughs> you have to be honest. Like, you know, right. I thought some way. Y'all was sitting there having this conversation. You were talking about something I, I know nothing about. So I kind of just sat being an observer. I didn't feel like I was a part of it. Right. You have to continue mm-hmm. to keep your partner involved. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, I, and I've also noticed, I've also noticed like this, like <laughs> of those people that hire a nanny, right? And then and the husband oh. runs off with a nanny. But nowadays when women look for nannies, they making sure they're like, you know, 85 and up and their name is Olga with a big old mole right here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> exactly. Just to establish that boundary. You know. <laughs> It makes sense. Well, that that's interesting. You talk about including uh, the other one, and I get it because, like, if you're going out to eat and and you know they're just laughing at these jokes, and it's like that's not even funny. Hey, you know, <laughs> hey, you go like, you know, you know, like, you know that person laughed at all your jokes. You know, Tasha, how long, Tasha? How long does it take to get to that point? Because I, I I think you know you talk about being honest with yourself. I think it's it's um it's uh misleading to think that you just get there like it just naturally organically happens right i think there's a process to that point when it's like oh okay you know what i'm saying there's a build up how long like how long was that process for you it depends on the friendship um you know uh there are sometimes when you can walk into a relationship with someone and you've been friends with someone of opposite sex for years coming into that relationship that person has always been there so if that person makes you feel comfortable from the onset, mm-hmm. that process can be really short. But if it's a matter of someone new coming into the relationship, you know, oh, I work with this person or I did a show with this person and I want to hang out with this person. Now it's like, all right, well, I'm going to need to know some things. It's, it's not something that happens overnight. If you're secure in your relationship, I mean, like really secure in your relationship, then for each person is it's different. I may be I may be secure in my relationship with my husband to the point where I'm not looking at anybody else sideways. It might take me a couple years to get there. Or I might walk into that relationship already secure because I know like I knew my husband before we started dating. We were friends first. So there were a lot of people in his life I already knew. Mm-hmm. And they knew me. So you know in certain situations it really wasn't a thing. Like okay. Mm-hmm cool and then in in other situations it was like oh yeah like i said um she works in dispatch and we're all everybody's going out for dinner and for drinks and i'm like oh yeah where y'all going i'm coming (laughs) i like it (laughs) makes sense makes sense i'm coming right so it's it's it depends on the couple it depends on the two people and it depends on their dynamic it's true it's true and the threat is the threat if the friend is respectful, I had a situation when I was married with my husband and he had a friend uh, um, that was his friend from back in you know, his country and she moved here. And so they would talk on the phone and whenever they were talking on the phone, he'd include me. Hey, talk to her. She wants to say hi, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, OK. And we had we built this relationship over, I don't know, maybe a year or two. And then we decided that we were going to take our families together her husband and her kids and me and my husband and our kids on vacation. And while we're, and so now meeting her for the first time face to face and we're talking and we go to stay at their house. Right. And so while the men went out to get, you know, drinks or whatever and come back while I'm sitting in the kitchen with her, she looks at me and she goes, you know, I've always loved him. And I'm like, what? Wait, (laughs) loved him. And I'm thinking to myself, was there a need for her to announce that? Because as friends, you know, there's some love there, right? Right, right? But you didn't need to announce it because I got that from the onset. 
that, you know, there was love there. You guys have maintained this friendship over the years. Now I'm feeling kind of some kind of way. Like this is more than just a friendship. This lady has some underlying feelings for my husband that she's trying to let me know. And I'm not feeling comfortable. And now I'm in her house and I'm saying, hmm, this is not going to be good. <laughs> And over the vacation, I realized that really she does have feelings for him. And I had to check him and say, hey, did you see her do this? And the last resort for me was when she we were eating, we were out at dinner, and she went to stick her fork in his plate and share food. <laughs> My- that had to do. Like at that point, right, yeah, I went there, Tasha. I did. So, so that would that friendship had to end. Because we were done. I'm sure my yeah. wife would have well, my wife would have cussed her and me off as a oh, like no. that. I don't even... <laughs> I did a little bit of for that. Real. She would have drawn back enough. Well, I said out loud for her to hear so she can understand where we at with this. But that was a friendship that I thought was genuinely just a friendship. She's married with children. He's married with children. But she had she had some feelings that she was you know, suppressing, I guess, and decided she let me know. And I was like, whoa. And she did it in a way that you was like questioning, like, okay, what is she saying right now to me? But we're not stupid. We're women. We know, you know, when somebody is liking somebody or there's um, some feelings there other than just a platonic friendship or genuine just friendship. Just, I just love him. He's a great person. That wasn't it. So sometimes, you got to be careful. See, and that's that's what I'm saying. It's all about being able to recognize those dynamics. Right. And seeing how people interact with one another. There's nothing more telling than seeing someone's body language. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Also, too, I feel, I feel that, like, because I know for me personally, if I know that I'm being introduced to my boyfriend, friend who happens to be a female, my first thing in my mind is like, well, what she look like? <laughs> you know, because if she's like cacao, 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 uh, then about yourselves may not be a, a, a go with me. Because, um, you know, I just find that, look, if I'm looking, then I know you looking. <laughs> that's how I feel. <laughs> right? uh, uh, I, 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 I can admire a beautiful woman all day. Yeah, yeah. You know, but if she's coming into the picture bombshell, you know, looking like Pamela Anderson. Talk about yeah, me and your husband are going out for dinner, or me and your man are gonna go out for dinner. I'm like, wait a minute, you gonna FaceTime me? Like, what's going on? You know, um, um that- the opposite end of that, even being married, um, where I one of my best friends is a guy. It just mm-hmm. so happens he's my daughter's godfather, and you know, we're we're all friends, my husband and I, he were all friends. Yeah. But he's he's dated women who we've gone out, even when I'm with my husband, feel some way because of the dynamics between, like we've had to tone down the stupidity that can be our friendship sometimes so that people don't feel left out. But even from just the introduction, you get it, you know when someone isn't feeling you. Right. So even, um, just <laughs> right. the introduction, sometimes you, you feel a vibe. And I, even my husband, who sometimes is not the most keen on people, to be like, did you pick up that shade? I'm like, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Because she has nothing to worry about. Mm. Right. Oh, you. Right. But, you know, so when you try to make that person being on the other end of it, being the friend that the girlfriend feels some way about, I always go out of my way to try to make them feel included. Sometimes I'll even ignore the boyfriend and spend all of the evening just focused on that person so that they don't feel like I'm trying to encroach on an area that I, that's not for me. I like it. I like it. I got one for Nadeva. Let's let's switch focus to the um, the overstepping of boundaries, the inappropriateness of it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like every time, you know, at least for the last five years, uh, you think of the Me Too movement and you keep hearing these stories and stories of women that have been violated and and whatever sphere in the workplace and and religious uh uh centers uh really in every facet of life uh talk to us like as a woman a diva like in this question i'm gonna start with you what 
you know, I, I don't know. You know, I'm I'm a man. I, I don't I don't know. I, I don't know what it's like to be one. I can never I always say, you know, a grasshopper shouldn't speak. Uh, for an ant and an ant shouldn't speak for a grasshopper. They all have their voice, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, what is that like, like the warning signs, right? Because there's buildup. I, I, I just, you know, obviously there is the, the overreach that is so egregious, right? That, you know, everybody can see it and say that. But before that, I always feel like there's a buildup that just doesn't get addressed. So when the overreach happens, you know, now it's it's at this uh, pivotal point, you know. And if you want to share an experience, like what what is that? What are those steps that men need to just be aware not to do? Well, I mean, I'm actually in a situation now where I have a friend who is just a friend, and um, you know, although I know, look, I ain't the most beautiful woman, but I know that you know I'm an attractive woman who's single, and he's single. But I keep if I'm not. I'm cool with being friends with the opposite sex and it'd be just platonic, right? But given that, you know, uh, men might be attracted to me, I always try to make sure I'm establishing that boundary early on. But there are times when I can tell it's getting difficult for them. So like, for instance, if I'm, you know, I like to dress, I like, you know, I'm always done up, my, you know, face is done and, um, if we happen to go out and you're staring at me the whole night like a rotisserie chicken, you know, just looking at the, the, the just drippings off me, like, I'm just like, hold on, wait a minute. Like, you know, I think um, conversation, if I see the conversation is turning a little bit left, like you're constantly, oh my God, you're so beautiful, girl, you fine, oh my God, da 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 I'm like, hold on, where, where's, where's that coming from? Um, hmm. I also feel like... Um, um, like just little gestures sometimes can give men away and women away, you know. Um, but I think it's definitely looking for signs, looking for signs in conversation, looking for signs in their disposition and their demeanor. Um, when you see that they're like, like one night we, we were watching a movie together and then all of a sudden he, I said something that was touching to him during the movie and he put his hand on my hand. And I was like, what's that? What's that there? What's that? You know, this is the topic, right? This ain't, this ain't, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that, you know? So it's like little things like that, but I, I definitely try to check them. And if I feel like things are becoming difficult for them, then sometimes I'll have that discussion and back away a little bit. Um, because it is what it is. I mean, I'm a single woman, but I do enjoy being around men, you know, and, and being in their company. But I don't feel like it's so you can't have a platonic relationship or a platonic friendship with someone as long as they honor the friendship, as long as they respect you as a woman and respect your boundaries as a woman. Yeah, there have been plenty of times where I've encountered men that have overstepped that boundary and they never overstepped it again. Um, because you got to have that, you know, that tough love sometimes. Or but, you um, just cut it off. Or you just cut it off, which I've done as well, too. I don't have, um, I don't usually stay friends with men that I have relationships with. Once it's done, it's done. So we start off as a friend and we get into a relationship nine times out of ten. If it doesn't work, that friend. It makes sense. It makes sense. Tracy, talk to us about, because Nadeva talks about it at first, I think, on a, uh, nominal level, it starts off just in the form of communication, right? Um, and from this, it evolves into something unwanted and drastic. Uh, that disposition, like when it switches, right? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it so? Uh, so so pointed that you could be like, okay, look, you're gone too far. You know this. You know that. You know part of the conversation we can't engage in, you know, and, and the reason why I ask is because I think Hollywood is misleading. Uh, you know, I think movies and I love all of Tyler Perry's, you know, work. I, I think he's iconic. I, I think his stuff is exaggerated. You're right. Like, you know, movies like Acrimony and stuff, you know, that's a farce on a, on a lot of just different types of relationships and the scale of it. So what is that cue? Like, what is that like? Hey, you know, like, don't, don't. What is that right. cue? Like, even in, 
like say a first date and you go out with somebody and clearly we are just getting to know each other, right? So I'm not expecting you to be grabbing on me, touching me inappropriately. Um, and when it, and, and it has happened. And at that very moment, you're supposed to say something. I think too many people, it happens and they make excuses for it or too afraid to say something for whatever reason. Maybe they're in a work relationship um, and scared of losing their job or what someone's going to say, right? Or, you know, or just they're not outspoken enough to address it. So they take it home and it builds and then someone else says something. And this is how the Me Too movement started, right? Someone else says something and you know it happened to you too. And now that person gives you a voice because you didn't have one before, but now you see it and then you piggyback off of that. And I think that you should say something when you're being violated from the start. You should always say something. You should always have a voice to let people know that I've been um, violated or I I feel uncomfortable. I don't like how you look at me. I don't like how you talk to me. Please don't touch me. I think those are things that we as people and especially as women, we need to say it from the start, from the mm-hmm. onstart. We see it happening. We need to address it immediately. And mm-hmm. we don't. No, we that's don't. well said. Well said. I don't think Talk it's always, I don't I don't think it's always that easy. Um, for some people, I, yeah. I can love to be really outspoken, as the ladies will tell you. I, I don't shy away from speaking my mind, but having been in a situation where a coworker accosted me at work in the moment, I was so shell shocked mm-hmm. um, that I was like a deer stuck in headlights. I didn't really know how to move at that moment. Um, I did share my story with the former, with the, a fellow coworker mm-hmm. who encouraged me to go to HR. But I was, I was a, a woman working in a predominantly male environment. I didn't know how that was going to be received. He had a lot of clout in the company. Mm-hmm. He was in the boss's ear, so there were things that sort of kept me from pursuing it further, or or even even pursuing it at all. But telling a coworker, telling telling a fellow coworker made me feel a little safer. I was never alone with that person again. Um, eventually, I confronted that person. But in the moment when it was all happening, you, I was scared. I froze in terror. And, and then once everything had happened, I needed time to process what had happened because I was caught. I was caught off guard at the aggressiveness of it. I wasn't caught off guard that it happened because he had been saying things that had made me feel uneasy. But once we were alone in my office, it's it's not always as easy as as speaking up in the moment. You want to, you want to have that strength. You want to be able to be that person to be like, hey, whoa, slow down, pump the brakes. What was that? You know, don't do that. Don't touch me. Don't do that. But unless it's you're not in- that easy, I know. Been there. But it's 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 I can I, I find it's easier for me to do it for someone else, ironically, mm-hmm. than it is for me to do it for myself. You, you know what's so funny is uh the question I was going to pose to you and talk about how God works was Tasha, have you ever felt pressure uh, from a, a man or, you know, overstepping his boundary? That's interesting that you share that. What do you think is, is um, uh, missing? Right. Um, you know, I, I, then again, I, I, you know, I, I'm honest about my own ignorance. You know, I've never have felt, you know, I've never been forced or, you know, anything. So when that happens, like you said, it was like a deer caught in headlights. Also the, the understanding, because there is a lack of diversity traditionally with a lot of organizations and the power dynamic is uneven, right? You think of your C-level execs and hires is pretty much men. And, right. you know, so, and you're dealing with predominantly white males, you know, so there's a lack even of, you know, ethnic and, you know, racial, cultural diversity, even within that. So, um, what, what is it, what is, uh, needed? What, cause it seems like it's not HR because if it was just HR, then all this stuff wouldn't be happening. Right. So, 
what what is that Mississippi? Is it just because nobody looks like you, right? Because you don't see yourself, and because one demographic has so much autonomy and power that just out of sheer numbers, it's intimidating. Right. I, I think accountability is missing. Um, when you when you think about the Harvey Weinstein's, um, the Matt Lowers. Uh, the governor called Mose, who right now is on an investigation, so nothing has definitely, you know, has been set in stone. But it, the the allegation, it's it's coming from the head. And uh, you know, Harvey Weinstein, who does who does Harvey Weinstein answer to? He's the head of the company. I mean, everybody answers to somebody, but getting to the person he answers to is a much harder task um, than than just going to HR. I think accountability is missing. I think compassion is missing, especially mm. because it's men for the most part who run these companies, who are the head of these organizations. So to get to the head, sometimes you need to be a little shrewd and not that shrewdness negates compassion, but it's harder to understand something when you're not a victim of it. It's sure. easier to say the woulda, coulda, shouldas if you're not living, if you're not walking in those shoes, um, women oftentimes aren't believed for whatever reason, either because there was someone before them who cried wolf or um, just ignorance, like you said, just, just sheer ignorance. I think accountability, understanding, all those things have to come into play when you're dealing with the power struggle and a power dynamic that makes a woman... Um, less than. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that, you know, because I've been in positions where people have have abused their title and their position um, by being inappropriate. And they've used their position to do that, um, which I think is, is horrible. But I, this, for some reason, makes me think back through history as Black women. We have been violated um, through rape from masters, um, um, even, you know, ancestral things. Um, we have, we through history, it has happened to us. And we have, I think nowadays, it's kind of expected for us when it happens because we're black, we gotta be strong women, you know? We gotta bear, yeah. we gotta bear the butt and keep it moving, you know? And then, um, you know, things start to happen emotionally, you know, or whatever. But I think that because of the history of it, it's like we're expected to deal with it. We're expected to have that tough skin. I mean, I, I can go through a personal story where I felt completely violated by somebody. But guess what? I had to put my bootstraps on and keep it moving. I had my accountability because I had my girlfriend. I was able to bounce it off of them and tell them exactly what happened. However, um, it was extremely taxing on me mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, but I knew that I had to keep moving. I knew I could not let what had happened keep me back from the greatness that I know that I'm, I've am i been called to, to be. So um, I think it's, it's in, in history, you know, as Black women, this has been a, a very, very uh, difficult subject uh, for us to talk about. But I'm glad that we are we're going through these. We're evolving as women. We're evolving as a, as as humans. And as we as we grow, we're starting to find out that there are Harvey Weinstein's out there. There are R. Kelly's out there. There are Bill Cosby's out there. And now is the time for us to step up and say, enough is enough. Enough is enough. The Me Too movement was started by a black woman because our voices have been silenced for so long. That's the thing too, though. But where's the consequence? I understand about the accountability, but you also feel sometimes like I'm going to say something, and and nothing's going to happen, and and they're going to turn it around and make me look like, oh well, she had five boyfriends before, and she was um she used to hang out at the bar. Like they're going to start attacking your character, yeah. and. That didn't have anything that never gave you the right to touch me inappropriately or violate me. It never gave you the right. It doesn't matter what boyfriend I had or what's my situation over there. You still can't, you don't, that doesn't give you the right to touch me inappropriately or do or, or, or to violate me. I think that there's also no consequence. And the consequence is like the victim. You become, you know, it's the, the victim. 
Yeah, yeah, it's, it is. And it's like you say something and then you suffer even more for talking. So you're like, never mind. I'm just going to pull yeah. out my chops and keep it moving and put it behind me. And it does mess with you emotionally. It does. And it's taxing and it's exhausting. And talking and getting it out helps. And that's why you have your girlfriends and your family that you feel you should you should talk to. And I just when I was saying you, you need to say something and speak up, Tasha, definitely. I, you know, I've also had a situation where I had someone, a plumber that was my plumber for years and called me downstairs and said, hey, I need something. And I gave him whatever he needed and I went to walk away and he smacks me on my behind. And you you guys know me. I'm very outspoken. I said nothing. I just kept walking and walked upstairs to my bedroom, closed the door and started crying. Yeah. I didn't tell my husband. I just said to him, you know what? We don't need to use that plumb anymore. And if we do, can you just be home when we, whenever he comes? And he was like, yeah, I could be home. He didn't really think about it. And so the third time that I said to him, no, I don't want, I, I can't be with the plumber. Can you do it? And he said, what happened? Yeah. And I finally told him, and it was like a year later. And he's like, why didn't you say something? And I'm like, because I just, it, I was so t- taken off guard. It was somebody that was like a grandfather to me, somebody that I, trusted somebody that I I left in the house fixing something with my children had he touched my children it was just so much that it was overwhelming and I didn't say something for a long time because I didn't know how to I didn't know where to start I think that's also conditioned through our people as well so don't talk don't tell be quiet yeah yeah don't talk don't tell if your man's cheating on you you can't say nothing you know don't Don't approach him if somebody violates you or take advantage of you don't say anything. Yeah, just be quiet. And yeah. I think it's because of also the lack of education as far as mental health is concerned in, in the black community as well. Um, you know, women unfortunately don't know that there are other outlets. Aside from going to your girlfriends or going to a neighbor or going to whoever, you know, there are therapy. There's 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 therapy for for things like that. And that we don't have to be silent about this anymore. I don't know how we were conditioned. I guess we were conditioned back in slave days, you know, you can't tell the masses reading it. You know, and it's just trickled down from generation to generation to generation. Yeah. yeah. Even in families of incest and stuff like that, they didn't, you know, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, you was, you was, be quiet. That didn't happen. Act like that didn't happen. And that's, that's part of the problem. And I'm so happy we're talking now. Yeah, because, like, you know, it, it puts men on notice now that because they have also been conditioned to be able to do these things and get away with it. Right Absolutely. now, we're coming to a world where nah, bruh, you ain't getting away with that now because we're gonna be vocal and we're speaking up and speaking out. But that to me goes back to the accountability. It's it's no different than blaming the victim of rape because of what she wore. You must have done something. You must have left an opening. You must have done something that made that person feel like it was okay to behave that way, rather than turning turning it inward and saying. You know, no, he's just a jerk or, you know, his, his ego, he needed his ego stroked. He's used to getting his way because of his position in power. And he's he's not used to having to be accountable to anybody. He's used to just kind of doing whatever he wants to do. So this is the way he behaves. Mm-hmm. And some men even will wait till a woman is in her most vulnerable state, you know? So like, let's say for instance, you know, she had a little bit too, too much to drink. And that that's like for, for some men, that's their, that's their go-to moment. Um, or let's say you guys happen to just be chilling and she happens to fall asleep. You know how many men have tried to take advantage of women like that? You know, but that, that's not, that to me, that's, that's not a woman giving you an invitation. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's right. not a woman giving you an invitation to touch her, to, to, to speak a feeling or nothing. You know, but men will wait for those vulnerable moments, and then what? It, it's just so I'm 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 happy. I'm happy that um, yes, that you know, women are becoming accountable for one another. That we're no mm-hmm. longer staying silent because men need to, men and women. Because I mean, it's not just men. You know, there are women that are out there too that are are taking advantage of 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 men. You know, there are men that that are women are building relationships with men just to try to get in their pants. You know. Yeah. Um, so it happens on both, on both sides. It does. Yeah. I, I just think you have to be, there has to be some 
some fear of a consequence. You know, my daughter is 17. She's starting to age. My husband has been very clear that anybody who knocks on the door to pick her up, remember what you do to her, I do to you. Yeah. And my husband's <laughs> crazy. So people don't. Right. Got to be a consequence. Yeah, there's got to be a consequence. Got to be know. fear of a consequence. Yeah, you make my little girl cry, I'm going to make you cry. Like, you know, you just, there mm -hmm. has to be fear of, of what you reaping what you sow. Mm -hmm. And I think well, women also need to be accountable too for and be responsible to not put themselves in situations as well. Like, you know, if you get in sleepy, take it behind home. Don't go lay in his bed. Or on his couch. Go or on his couch. You know, you get tired, go home. Um, limit yourself on how many glasses of wine you might have in company. So you're what? not in that vulnerable position. No, I, I First of all, thank you all uh, for your transparency and vulnerability. Um, for real, I appreciate all of you for just truth, truth to power. So what, what, and Tracy, I'll start with you. What do women need uh, from men? Um, you know, we talk about this accountability aspect and some might argue we have that. We have a judicial system, Right. Right. Uh, and if you're a person of color, you already have your predisposition <laughs> against that judicial system. Right. So but we have that. We have laws. We have things already in place. Well, we is the United States. Right. So what what do what do um, women need from us? Because it seems like this trust has been broken in so many different ways and so many different forms and so many different variables. And we're talking now about it, but are we repairing the breach? Right. And I think obviously there's steps to it. Uh, and the dialogue is absolutely essential to begin the healing process, but I don't think men get it. Right. I don't think as a whole, it's even discussed. It's still kind of like, you know, you know, that's just an isolated incident, right? It's not like, no, this is probably the norm, you know, <laughs> and what you think is going on is an isolated reality, right? right. Uh, so Tracy, I'll begin with you. What do men need to provide to their, their fellow female counterparts, their sisters? We need your support, Cody. We need you guys to support us. We need you to hear us. You know, when we when we say it, don't just brush it off like, oh, this, this, this is an isolated incident. We need you to support us in the way that you're hearing us and saying, how can I help you through this moment? Or maybe your support in talking to your brothers and letting them know because they because you may get it right. And he doesn't. And when you guys are sitting together and having those men moments and then bring it to the forefront uh, for those people as well, for your, your brothers, your cousins, your uncles, your friends. When Because sometimes coming from us, it's like, they're just whining again. Here they go nagging. They're talking. They're in there. We get where you're emotional. Um, is it that time of the month that you're just feeling yourself or whatever? We always get brushed off that we're emotional or whatever. It's not that. I it's the it's communication and your support. We need it. Hmm. Sasha. Yes. I think understanding. Um again, holding your, your fellow brother accountable, checking the ego. Hmm. Uh, you know, that ego, that ego can be a can be a killer. <laughs> have to be be able to check that ego and be okay with hearing no and um and like tracy said just be supportive if someone is trusting you enough to come to you and share something with you that is personal and making themselves vulnerable and they're opening up to you um you know help them create a support network so that they feel safe in, in coming to you and sharing with you. And um, yeah, 
be open-minded. Don't be quick to judge. Get all the facts. But, you know, let your sisters know that you're there to hold them up. Hmm. Diva. Well, what I feel is very important is respect and honor. Respect and honoring a woman. Um, when I think of a woman, um, I think of Proverbs 31 and the description of a woman. And I feel like, you know, if men are in tune with themselves, if men have some type of a relationship with their mother, because I think it also falls on that as well. How do they view women? And that's based on how they were raised. You know, did they have a, did they have a healthy mother figure in their life? Um, because that definitely, uh, lens into uh, how they'll be treating women in, the, in in their personal life, in their relationship. So I feel like if a man respects and honors his mother, then that would definitely go a long way for a woman in his life. And um, but I think that also what's key is communication, that we sh- we don't need as women and as men, um, we, we don't need to feel like, oh my God, I can't talk, or oh my God, I have to be silent, no. I feel like we need to start talking. I think we should start communicating and being extremely open and transparent with these these subjects and with one another. And if you feel someone was out of pocket or stepped out of line, no longer be silent about it. You know, there there are things that have been set in place now as far as consequences are concerned. Um, and I think the ultimate the ultimate wrath you'll get is from God. You step out of line, right? So. Um, with that being said, yeah, I would say honoring and respecting one another yeah. and um, communication, communicating and no longer being silent and having accountability partners as well. I love it. I want to thank my guests. They have been amazing. They've shared their personal stories. And I'm sure, you know, when they signed up for this, that was probably not part of it. Um, but I want to thank <laughs> Diva, Tracy, Tasha, TNT Production. They have been absolutely amazing. Guys, where can they connect with you? What are you doing? Where can they follow you? Tracy, where can they follow you? Tasha, where can they follow you? Connect you, support you? Well, our major platform right now is on YouTube. So follow us at Dining with Nadeva on YouTube. And we're also on all of the audio platforms. So you can find us on iHeart, um, Apple, uh, Spotify. And we have just acquired our first network. So we will now be, you can see us on Roku at the Inspired Living Network. Um, And we're very excited about that. And we will be premiering on the network April 7th at 7 p.m. And we will be on that network network every Wednesday at 7 p.m. So check us out there. Check us out on YouTube and all of the audio platforms. Ah. Yes. (laughs) I love it. Guys, support them. They are amazing. I always say this. Support, get support. And the cool thing about subscribing to the YouTube channel, following them on Instagram is simply it's free. It takes yes. nothing. And when you do that, yes. it allows people to get into them. It shows them, hey, we support you. We love you. And you know how you want to keep supporting this? Subscribe to the YouTube page at YouTube at CV Space K. My guests have been amazing. These are the leaders, not of tomorrow, but of today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, what's up, everybody? You like what you saw? We're entertained. We're informed. We want to keep seeing amazing content. Subscribe at the link below. YouTube, CV Space K. You connect where all podcasts are streaming. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor. Connect with me. I want to connect with you. Let's enjoy the ride.